tonight right where we ended. Bless the Lord on Sunday. Such powerful revelation word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I'm going to start on a scripture I mentioned and ended on, and we're going to exhort you a little tonight in the word, and we're going to see what we can uh, get out of this tonight. All right. Choose better part two. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 6 and 9. Hebrews 6 and 9. And let's read that. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 6 and 9. And it declares, even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. Another translation says, we are persuaded of better things of you and the things that accompany your salvation. I love it how the author of this uh, 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 te- this uh, book, praise the Lord, this chapter, amen, begin to admonish the church, begin to admonish the people, amen, that no matter what they were going through, they were persuaded of better things for them. How many know God is interested in our spiritual development? We're not just here just to remain. We're not just where we are just to remain. He takes us from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Amen. He takes us uh, into the depths of him. And God is interested in our development. When I was a child, I speak as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. And so we thank God for new life. You know, I've heard the saying years ago that Jesus did not come to make bad people good but to make dead people alive. I'll say that again. Jesus did not come to make bad people good, but to make dead people alive. And that is a good statement, and that is a true statement. Praise the Lord. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and all things that come brand new. Amen. And, and yes, glory to God. Jesus came to save us. And I say that is a true statement. Glory to God. He did come to save us. Amen. Glory to God. But there's also more to that. If Jesus came to give us new life, he also came to give us abundant life. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Yes, he came to give us new life, but he also came to give us abundant life. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And all through the word of God, amen, hallelujah, all through the word of God, even the book of Proverbs is all about talking about making us better people. Even in the book of Proverbs, it starts with talking about the fear of the Lord, but it moves on there to simply showing us how to live in rich lives, a better life. Is that all right? Glory to God. And Paul's epistle in the book of James even gives us input on how to be better people. And somebody ought to have that testimony still in 2024. I just want to be better. Glory to God. In every way, shape, form, a fashion, glory to God. I want to be better than I've been. Not that I've arrived, not that I've, I've reached the mark, but I just want to be better. I want to grow, whether that's financial, what that spiritually in my health in my relationships I just want to be better hallelujah amen is, is that your testimony tonight I want to be better and if we miss this we'll fail to experience the best of what God has to offer us you see, God believed, what Jeremiah 29 11, we quote it all the time. I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. See, he believes in you and he wants to help you grow and he wants your life to be meaningful. And the truth is, the closer we draw to him, the better life can be. The more we assimilate uh, to the mind of Christ, the better life will be. The more we walk in the spirit, the better life can be. 
Those three things that I just mentioned, that transcends uh, circumstances in your life and it enriches your life beyond measure, period. The closer I draw to him, the better my life will be. The more I take on the mind of Christ, the better my life will be. The more I walk in the spirit, the better my life can be. Now, now that does not in any way assume that life will not have seasons of testing or trial or get hard sometime, or that you will not be responsible for your success or failures. But it does mean that God's best for your life can be realized. See, see, I want to walk in. I want to realize what God has for me, what he said about me, what he said I can be. And the writer of Hebrews is talking to a people whose lives were hard and hard things are being demanded of them. And right there in the midst of everything that was going on, the writer of Hebrews, glory to God, exalted the people. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are persuaded of better things in your case and things that accompany your salvation. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if it's persecution. I don't care if it's hard afflictions. We are still persuaded of better things. And just because you're going through something doesn't give you a pass to not try to be better. Teach, Bishop. Glory to God. I said just because you're going through something, it doesn't give you a pass or an excuse to stop striving to be better. Just because you heard bad news, just because you got a bad doctor's report, come on, just because things not working out the way you want them to work out, that does not give you an excuse to still pursue better things. Here's my first point tonight. God's will is better. Come on, type that in. God's will is better. God's will is better. He said, though I speak, though I speak in your case, I'm persuaded of better things of you. That word better, glory to God, in the Greek is translated into several different ways in the, in the English. But this is the second time the author in this book uses the word better. I draw your attention to it because he will use it again and on another nine occasions be, be, before we come to the end of the letter. For a total of 11 times. In fact, is one of his favorite words. Glory to God. Outside of Hebrews is found only four times in the rest of the New Testament. The first time we find it is in Hebrews uh, chapter 1 verse 4. And we see that Jesus is infinitely superior to the angels. And the final time will be in chapter 12, verse 24, where the author tells us that Jesus' blood speaks a better word th than the blood of Abel. How many know the blood speaks a better word? Glory to God. If I had time, I'd preach on that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But the blood speaks a better word. I don't care what my past is. I don't care what I've been through. How, come on, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, what can cover me? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I don't care what's against you. The blood speaks a better word. See, if you're familiar with the Old Testament, you'll know that Abel's blood cried out uh, for the guilt and condemnation of his murderous brother Cain. But Jesus' blood cries out for forgiveness and restoration of sinners like you and me. The blood speaks a better word. How many know, come on, God has given us a better covenant. Glory to God. Ecclesiastes says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. You better choose better because it's God's will for you to walk in, to have, and to live in better. Well, I haven't reached my goals, but are you getting better? My God. I'm not where I should be, but are you getting better? My God. Hallelujah. I got a ways to go, but are you getting better? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll take better on the way, glory to God, to where God has for you, glory to God. But are you getting better? Am I better yesterday than I was yesterday? Am I better today than I was yesterday? 
And I want to encourage you tonight with some simple truths that if you'll start to meditate on them and apply them, your life will be enriched. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And and glory to God. Uh, These truths, they, they lie in the background of what the author in Hebrews is trying to tell the people. And it should be embedded in our philosophy of living. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here's my next point. What God says you must do, God knows you can do. What God says you must do, God knows you can do. Come on. Hallelujah. See, we're in a time now that we got to focus on what God said and not what they said. Not what the flesh is saying, not what everybody else is trying to dictate. I must focus on what God has said. And and let me say this to you tonight. You got to move the dirt to get to the gold. Woo! You, you, you have to move the dirt to get to the gold. There's a man by the name of Andrew Carnegie who once talked about the process of gold mining. And he said, in this industry, you know and expect to move a lot of dirt. And he said, there's no need to complain about the dirt and the do, and the do, uh, 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 the rubbish and, and the mess. There's no need to complain about the debris because it's a part of the task. Somebody know where I'm going tonight. It's a part of the job. But you must keep in mind that moving the dirt is not the job. Finding the gold is the job. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have to move dirt to get to gold. My God. Hallelujah. What are you looking for in this season? Dirt or gold? Glory to God. We're looking for gold. We're looking for the treasure. We're looking for what God said we can have. We're looking for what God said we can be. Glory to God. And sometime in life, it's going to get messy. And sometime in life, glory to God, when you're working on something, hallelujah, it looks a mess before it's the final product. But we're looking for the gold. And many of you are discouraged because you keep looking at dirt, but dirt is not the job. Finding the gold is the job, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let that sink in tonight because you got to deal with messy stuff. Glory to God. But the dirt is not the job. The gold, G-O-L-D, the prize, come on, in in your family, come on, if you just look at the mess, come on, sometimes there's things that go on in the kingdom, are you going to pay, are you going to pay attention to the dirt, or are you looking for the gold? And we have this treasure, my God, in earthen vessels. Because, folks, it will become easier for you if you focus on the gold. I'm focused on what God said. I can see in you the glory of the king. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking past all the stuff. Glory to God. But I'm looking at the fact that God wants to unwrap some gifts and that God wants to take you into greater places. But sometimes you got to deal with the dirt. One scholar said life is hard. But if you will be hard on yourself, it'll be easier. See, our Heavenly Father does not always make it easy. Glory to God. But he knows you, and he knows you can do what he calls you to do. And that's why Philippians, I feel like encouraging somebody. 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What what God calls you to do, he knows that you can do it. John, 1 John 4 and 4, little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. See, God never asks you to do more than we can, but we often think we can do less than we can. Oh, slow down and say it again. See law on that. I said God never asks us to do more than we can, 
but we often think we can do less than we can. And so sometimes God will give you something greater so that you can come up to walk into it. Can I say something tonight? God believes in you. And it grieves me when I see people who've never risked following God. Let, let me say it this way. Hebrews 6 and 9. Glory to God. I am convinced of better things of you. So what you messed up? I'm persuaded of better things. So what you missed it the last time? I'm persuaded a better thing. See, that's the language of the kingdom. That's the language that we ought to admonish one another. Come on, not pointing your finger, not talking down, not gossiping. You just tell folk, hey, I'm persuaded of better things of you. You can do better than that. You got more in you than that. Well, I can't do this, but I'm telling you, you can do better than that. You got to choose better. You have to go after better. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's the other, my next point. Glory to God. You are governed, even dominated by what you think about yourself. You are governed and even dominated by what you think about yourself. Give me Proverbs 23 and 7. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Proverbs 23 and 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. All right, let's go to Romans 8 and 37. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Romans 8 and 37, knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. See, you are governed and even dominated by what you think about yourself. Let me say this tonight. When you fail to live up to your potential, when you fail to live up to, to the potential that, that, that your creator has designed for you, you're living in bondage. Oh, Lord Jesus. And something other than God's best is determining your destiny. When you fail to live up to your potential that, that your creator designed for you, you're living in bondage. Oh, come on, Wednesday night. Glory to God. And you are missing his fullness. See, we got to go after the fullness of what God said. I'm bumping into this. I got a little bit of here, a little bit there. I want the fullness of what God said. Come on. Hallelujah. I want the vision of what God has said. Glory to God. And I'm not going to stop and I'm not going to quit. When you fail to live up to the potential of your creator that he's designed for you, you're living in bondage. And this is why oftentimes we're, we're, we're seeing delays, denials, holdups, setbacks, pushbacks, Prophecies being delayed, things being hindered. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because, because we're not coming up to the potential. That's what hindered the children of Israel. And they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. A whole generation had to die off. Glory to God. And God had to come up with something else. Because oftentimes, known bondage is more comfortable than unknown freedom. Woo! My God. I said oftentimes, known bondage is more comfortable than unknown freedom. That's why the children of Israel, every time they went through something they didn't like, every time they got uncomfortable, they talked about going back to Egypt. Because known bondage is more comfortable than unknown freedom. So you don't know about that, that, that wilderness life. You don't know about that promised land life. You don't know about that milk and honey. Come on. Glory to God. You don't know about God sustaining you in this way. Known bondage is more comfortable than unknown freedom. 
And that's why people, you're like, look at all that God has for you. Look at all that God said you can have and all be, and they'll run right back to the familiar because known bondage is more comfortable than unknown freedom. But how about we change the pattern of our thinking tonight? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because it's possible to have a word from God and it not come to pass. And God said it. Okay. Because we need to understand, glory to God, that prophecy is conditional. And then, so what you have to do now, what you have to do is, glory to God, you got to watch your self-talk. You got to watch your self-talk. And you got to watch what you say to yourself. You, you know, if I'm driving and I'm, a, I'm on my way to going somewhere, glory to God, and I get on the freeway, glory to God, and I decide to get all the way over to try to, uh, to, try to turn in the other lane, glory to God, and the car in front of me, don't let me over. Glory to God. Then I can sit there in the car and I can get mad and say, they did that on purpose. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They didn't let me over on purpose. And I can misjudge somebody. Glory to God. And then I can go on this rant and say, everybody picking on me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because if you have that self-talk, if you automatically assume the wrong thing, hallelujah. Glory to God. But, but I know sometimes everybody's not picking on you. There's no way that lady may have known that I wanted to turn. Especially if I didn't have my blinker light on. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But, but see, if you, if you start letting seeds in your life and then you keep on going, glory to God, and you get on another freeway and the same thing happened to you, say, see, everybody's picking on me. See, you got to watch what you say to yourself and how you let that um, uh, linger. Because something similar will happen and you'll assume about your life, glory to God, that this is what it, this is the, the, the narrative about me. You got to watch that self-talk. Because this is what I found out. You can talk yourself into or out of anything. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You can talk yourself into or out of anything. Come on. What do we say? I know, I, I, I know I'll be tired in the morning. I, ca I can't do this. I know it won't work. It won't happen. What if they say no? You can have a whole prophetic word and talk yourself out of it. As a man thinketh, so is he. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you got to get to the point and say, wait a minute. If other people can do that, I can do it too. You got to get to the point and say, wait a minute. God is no respecter of persons. And sometimes when you're doing something that's above your skill set, you got to watch what you think. When you're already doing something that's challenging, when you're already doing something that's going to take faith, you got to watch what you say. You can't try to do something uh, uh, challenging or something new, and the whole time you're doing it, you're saying, I'm so stupid. I can't do this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No, you got to say, no, thank you, Lord. No, you anointed me to do hard things. You, you anointed me to do some things I've never done before because I'm going somewhere I've never gone before. Hallelujah. And you are trained me with small things so that I can reign in big things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so you got to make sure that you intentionally. Sometimes we doing stuff. David did not be Goliath. Hallelujah. Having the wrong self-talk. Think about the Bible record what David was saying as he went up against Goliath. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. He thought he could, so he did. He talked faith, so he won by faith. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Here's what I'm saying tonight. If your self-talk doesn't match your challenge, you will be defeated. Woo, who am I preaching to tonight? If your self-talk don't match your challenge, you will be defeated. 
Glory to God. I, I must say it again for the people in the back. If your self-talk doesn't match your challenge, you will be defeated. You know, recently we had a church picnic. We had a church picnic, and, and we had a wonderful time. Glory to God. And so, uh, you know, I took a basketball goal from my house. Glory to God. And we rented a U-Haul. Glory to God. And the, 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 the basketball goal was a little too long, and so we couldn't close it. We couldn't close down the back of it to cover the U-Haul. And so uh, uh, First Lady brought all these different type of fancy rope and stuff uh, from, from, from so that we can secure it because we had to rig it to tie it up. And so so glory to God, uh, 15 minutes before we're supposed to leave, glory to God, I'm trying, because I'm, you know, I'm going to be honest, I'm not the most handy at times, praise the Lord, but I'm still anointed, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and so, and so I got to figure out real quick how to rig this, and I couldn't rig it fast, glory to God, the proper way, but all I knew is I had to get, we had to rig this some type of way so this goal won't uh, pull out, glory to God, as we're driving to the picnic. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And and at first I was saying, well, this goal is just not going to get there today because it's too late in the game. But after a while, I had to click. And I didn't rig it the right way, but I tied knots together, and I pulled it from over here, and I pulled it from over there. Glory, and I had about six different things going on. Glory to God. But I refused to be defeated. And, and let me let you know, we drove there. It stayed where it was supposed to. Glory to God. Had a wonderful time. And then when it was time to go back, glory to God. Deacon Robinson, who knew how to do it, he used one rope. I can't get nobody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and rigged it with less than what I used. And I said, aha, that's how it's supposed to go. But, but here's the moral of the story. It got there, didn't it? Glory to God. But it got there because I refused to be defeated. And if I got to rig it, but God is in it, it's going to work. I can't get nobody. To, how much stuff do we eject out of our life because we say, I've never done this before. So I can't do it. Well, I can't call nobody, so I can't do it. When you got the grace and the want to, God will make a way for you. Come on, and it'll be perfect. It wasn't pretty, but it worked. Lord Jesus, how many of you got ever had victories in your life? It wasn't pretty, but it worked. <laughs> it wasn't proper. Lord, I, I, I'm a little too excited on the Wednesday night. It wasn't proper, but it worked. Hallelujah. I made him follow all the instructions. Glory to God, but it worked. Come on, glory to I didn't follow the exact recipe, but it worked because I, I, had a, I had a want to. I refused to be defeated. And I had to come in agreement that some type of way, this is going to work. But if I stayed there the whole time saying this not going to work, this not going to work, it wouldn't have worked. I'm going to say it again. If your self-talk don't match your challenge, you will be defeated. Lord, this is hard, but I can do all things through you who strengthen me. Lord, this is hard, but the anointing will teach me all things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm stepping out on faith and doing some things, but you told me, glory to God, that whatever I put my hands on shall prosper. Glory to God. God, I'm trying to possess the land, and you told me that where, the, 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 where my feet, glory to God, tread. You will give it to me. See, that's, that's how you got to talk, glory to God. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So how you thinking? So be it. And so it is. And so it shall be. And so it will be. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you will reap what you sow. So you sow, you sow good character. And reap a good life. I'm talking about choosing better. If you want good character, you got to work at it. Especially after you've had bad character. Come on. Come on. If you used to lying, you got to work at telling the truth. My God. And it might not happen overnight, but you got to work at it. You got to choose better. It ain't just because I came to the altar and he made it all right. I got to leave the altar and do the work. Woo, my God. See, we want to come to the altar and want to go back to the pew and not do any work. Oh, my God. Holly, no, you got to choose better. 
If you want a good life, you got to work towards it. It won't be handed to you. And you need people around you to say, hey, I'm persuaded of better things from you. And the things that accompany your salvation. I'm almost done with this, but the people in Hebrews were undergoing persecution. Glory to God. And the writer of Hebrews perceived some symptoms of wavering under the heavy trial and under the temptation and since them not being established in the faith. And since how they were manifesting under, under pressure. And he said, I'm persuaded of better things for you and the things that accompany your salvation. In other words, if you saved, I can't get nobody. There is a way that you handle. There is a way you conduct. There is a way you roll. Come on. There is a way you handle stuff. I'm persuaded of better things for you and the things that accompany your salvation. I told you on Sunday, we'll all encounter bitter, water, bitter waters at some point in your life. But the key is to realize it's up to me if I'm going to become bitter or if I become better. Glory to God. I've seen some people sail through storms in life that others didn't make it through. They got shipwrecked and became bitter. Angry, resentful, glory to God, mad at the world, mad at themselves, even mad at God. But oftentimes you don't have no control over the storms that will hit your life. But you do have a power of choice. Woo! What, what, you have the power to decide what your response is going to be. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you tonight, it's for somebody. You, you have the power to decide what's my response going to be. Glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. I have to decide what my response is going to be. You have to decide that it doesn't matter what I go through, I'm going to keep on praising God. I've decided that no one can take my joy from me. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. I've decided nobody can decide my future but me. I'm the one who determines the harvest in my life by the seeds I sow. My God, I decided that I'll sing in prison, like Paul and Silas. Glory to God. I'll sing even in the midnight hour. I've decided I will not let life make me bitter, but I will become better. I decided, glory to God, though my heart has been broken, I'm going to give my heart to the Lord so that he can fix it and he can mend it. Glory to God, so I don't walk around bitter. Woo! You decide. Oh, I feel the anointing tonight. I said, I feel the anointing. You decide what your response is going to be. Sometimes your response got to be hallelujah anyhow. G God, I bless you anyway. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Nevertheless, blessed be the name of the Lord. You're going to let this break you down? Glory to God, or you're going to walk in the breakthrough. You decide. David said, I'm going to decide to bless the Lord at all times, and his praise will continually be in my mouth. I'm going to decide. Next point. Because change is inevitable, but growth is optional. Woo! Change is inevitable, but growth is optional. You going to go through changes in your life and let it suck the life out of you? Are you going to go through or are you going to grow through? Give me Mark 2 and 22. Change is inevitable, but growth is optional. Jesus said, no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins and the wine is destroyed and so are the skins. But new wine is for fresh wineskins. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Can I say something to you tonight on this Wednesday? You're changing even as we speak. 
<laughs> and here's my follow-up question. How will you capitalize on it? You get offended because people say you change. You're supposed to change. <laughs> change happens whether I want it to or not. <laughs> Hallelujah. You go through life changes. Yes, you do. Hallelujah. But let me help you. If you're going to change the right way, if you're going to change and be better, come on. Change requires humility. See, a proud man justifies and rationalizes his behavior. Only a humble man will seek change. Oh, this is good. The, the Lord shared this with me this afternoon. Change requires new thinking about old problems. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Oh, let me say that again. Change requires new thinking about old problems. Woo! Hallelujah. If, if you're going for better, you got to change the way you think. It requires new thinking about old problems. Glory to God. When you're in a new day, you're in a new season, come on. Hallelujah. You got to get to the place like this. If I knew what I know now, I probably would have done things different. But thank you, Lord, for watching over me. If I knew, hallelujah, if I knew then what I know now, I probably would have done things different. But change requires you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, when you come out of Egypt, you got to stop talking about the goodness of Egypt. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't care on your best day in Egypt, you are still in bondage. Change requires. Hallelujah. I don't care how blessed you. Well, when I was out in the world, I was so blessed. Yeah, but you was on your way to hell. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was doing this and I was, yeah, yeah but you wasn't in the will of God. Glory to God. Yeah, the flesh was pleased, but God wasn't pleased. A new way of thinking about a, see, when you have a new way of thinking about an old problem, glory, that will block bitterness. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, no, what I got to say is all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and called according to his purpose. Change requires support, determination, encouragement to offset the distractions the obstacles, and the temptations. I said change requires support and determination. Change requires dissatisfaction with the status quo and the familiar. Woo, my God, hallelujah. If I had time, I'd work on that. Change requires us to visualize a preferred future that we wish to obtain. You got to get dissatisfied with the status quo and the familiar and how it's been. Glory to God. Yes, that's how it's been, but God wants to take us into. Change requires deci uh, decisive action with high yet realistic expectation. And you got to start making changes today. You got to make up your mind to change your mind, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I know change is hard, but I know it gets harder the older we get too. <laughs> Listen, here's the word of the Lord for somebody. Change now or it'll be harder later. Woo, my God. Work on it now or it's only going to get harder later. Keep putting off for tomorrow what you can do today. Putting off, glory to God. No, the longer you stay in that bondage, the more you establish yourself in that bondage. You need to break out of it. Glory to God. I said the longer you make excuses for it, the longer you establish yourself in it. You're going to stay in it another week. It's going to be harder to come out of it in another week. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you, you I, I'm going to change three months from now. You're fortifying that strong man. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, you, you need to do it while it's today. Change now or it'll be harder later. And you already know it's some stuff that's already hard because we've been holding on to it for so long. 
Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's my expectation for you tonight. I'm persuaded of better things of you. And the Hebrews 6 and 9, and the things that accompany your salvation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You saved, you ought to be changing for the better. You saved, come on here. And come on. Hallelujah. You ought to have a conduct. You ought to have a language, a walk, and a talk. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The writer of this book, and I'm closing. Glory to God. The writer of this book saw the evidences of genuine salvation in the lives of those he wrote. I wonder what evidence we might look for and the things that accompany your salvation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe knowing the word, maybe walking in truth, maybe working in the vineyard. Come on here. Involvement in the things of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But, but you got to make sure that you're walking in the things that accompany your salvation. Because some people are like thorns. Always seem to scratch and irritate those whom they come in contact with. My God. No, no, no. You, to, you ought to be a peacemaker. Not always in confusion. Not always in mess. Come on here. Not always in the middle of mess. And we ought to be holy in our conduct. Not letting your good be evil spoken of. My God, hallelujah. Because oftentimes we're dishonoring God and hurting men. Dishonoring God and causing offense to the least of them all. So you can sound, you can be sound in theology. Heavenly involved in church activities and still very prickly. My God, hallelujah. Still thorny, glory to God. And we're not called to be like that. Glory. And we got to make sure that you're choosing better and you're choosing better from the inside out. Go to Matthew 7 and 15. Matthew 7 and 15. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's not by your works that any man boasts. He said, I want, I'm persuaded better things and the things that accompany your salvation. Beware of false prophets and those who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Here it is. You will know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into fire. Therefore, by their fruit, you will know them. I ain't talking about all the stuff you do. I'm talking about your fruit. The things that accompany your salvation. God is far more interested in our hearts and how we live. I know you know the word, but do you live the word? Are you trying to live the word? Come on here. Glory to God. Galatians 5 and 22. I got to cry loud tonight. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I'm persuaded better things and the things that accompany your salvation. Come on. Glory to God. Give me 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. Woo, my God. That's right, Pastor Robin. We are fruit producers. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass and a clinging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and though I have all faith so I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Hallelujah. And though I bestow all good deeds to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be, to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Come on, come on. If we're going to walk this thing, folks, there are some things that ought to accompany your salvation. And one of those things, you ought to have fruit and love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you got to choose better. Hallelujah. Here's my last scripture for tonight. Glory to God. Hebrews 11 and 12. After he told him, glory to God, hallelujah, this is what he said to, 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 uh, to, to the people. He said, we want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end. Woo. I want you to choose better to the very end. Glory to God. So that what you hope for, I'm about to run tonight, may be fully realized. For we do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience, glory to God, inherit what God has promised. Oh, Lord, that's my exhortation tonight. I I want you to sow. I want you to have the same diligence so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to be lazy, Lord Jesus, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise of God. Let me ask you a question. If you were on trial for being a believer, if you were on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? My God, glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah, because we got a whole bunch of folk that got a lot of title but don't have a lot of fruit, my God. But, But if you were on trial for being a believer, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Because if you're a believer, there ought to be some things that accompany your salvation. Come on, hallelujah. If we saved, come on, glory to God. If we saved, we ought to bear some fruit of our salvation. We ought to bear the fruit of repentance. If we saved, come on, we ought to walk holy and and walk up right. Well, would there be enough evidence? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's my last point. Stay diligent. Stay diligent. Stay diligent. And folks, we have to guard this. We have to guard this. Glory to God. You know, we're celebrating 22 years in ministry this weekend. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And and we didn't just get there just because we got there. Hallelujah. How do we sustain and stay in the race? Because we stayed diligent. Glory to God. Another translation says, we desire that each one of you show the same diligence of the full assurance of your hope to the end. And don't become sluggish. Because folks that received the promises of God in the word of God, they stayed in faith and patience. And it's what we got to guard against in 2024. It's amazing how diligent people can be in their hobbies. Mm. It's amazing how diligent people can be in what they want to do. People will spend hours Come on, in the gym, jogging, gardening, glory to God, collecting things, glory to God, watching TV, watching sports, watching their shows. Come on, they'll binge watch on Netflix, glory to God, or Hulu, or whoever, glory to God, hallelujah. But but it's amazing that oftentimes we find it so hard to spend effort and diligence attending to things that cultivate personal holiness. Oh, we'll be diligent to everything else but the things of God, the house of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But, 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 but we struggle oftentimes honoring God in our daily lives. But, but let me help you. If you're going to receive the promises of God, if you're going to inherit, you ain't going to get it through laziness. Lord Jesus, huh? you got to stay in faith. And you got to stay in patience. And you got to walk into things that accompany your salvation. And you got to get that daily manna. Come on. And that daily bread. And you got to stay in the race. The Bible says you did run well. But who did hinder you? God is not looking for sprinters who do well for the first few months of the year. 
who, 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 just, who just run for a little bit of time. Glory to God. No, he's looking for marathon runners who can go to full course, not people that start well and fizzle out. Come on, where you at? Where, where you at? Where you at? Come on. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to them that can endure to the end. And God wants us to preserve in the path of godliness. We have started, so we should finish. Confess your faults to God. Exercise your faith, the Christ daily. And instead of counting upon your past experiences, we must maintain present relationship with Christ. So, so many folk are counting on what they did for God. No, what are you doing for God? You got to maintain your present relationship, the test of the day. Come on, type that in, maintain the present. Maintain the present. Maintain the present. Maintain the present. You got to gauge everything in your life and say, what, 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 what does my current events look like? You got to watch who you around. I heard a preacher say today, glory to God, you got to watch the people you entertain. Come on here. Uh, I, I, I heard a preacher say today, almost all of our joys can be traced to our relationships with the right people. And almost all of our sorrows can be traceable to relationships with the wrong ones. Folks, you better move into the season of what God is saying. And don't let stuff expire. When God says cut, you need to cut. When God says come out, you need to come out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If not, you will have to deal with the mess of over expiration. You over the expiration date. Glory to God. And when you over the expiration date, it's not good. It don't look good. It don't taste good. It's not fresh. Glory to God. And you got to make sure that you maintaining relationships right. You better make sure you connected to the right people in the right season. My God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And if God's calling me out of bondage and you still in bondage, come on. Glory to God. Then we'll, we'll, you know, hey, how you doing? But I can't go back. You can meet me over here, but I can't go over there. My God, we'll talk from a distance, but I can't go over there. Philippians 2 and 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. This demands perseverance. If you're going to work out your own soul salvation, that's going to take perseverance. You getting in this word and this word getting in you. Glory to God. And, and you have to move into that place. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to move into that place. Hallelujah. You got to move into that place. I'll, I'll close on this. Glory to God. There was, there was a woman, glory to God, who uh, had an order of supply of coal and had it delivered. And, and a few minutes later, glory to God, all, all the lady had was a small shovel, glory to God, to, to, to get the coal and bring it in the house. And her daughter looked at it and said, how do you think you're going to keep doing that? All you got is this little shuttle. How do you expect to get all that coal with a little shovel? How do you expect to, to, to get all that in the house and all you got is a little shuttle, shovel? And she said, glory to God, it'll work. Hallelujah. She said, I'll do it. It'll work if I work long enough. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Although she had a small tool, she had something that made up for it, perseverance. Glory to God. I'm telling you, it's some folks, it's some stuff that'll work. Come on, if you do it long enough. Sometimes we don't see the victory because we don't do it long enough. Sometimes we don't see the victory because we don't stay in faith long enough. You got to be like the postage stamp. Its usefulness consists in its ability to stick to one thing until it gets there. <laughs> oh my God, hallelujah. That's what the postage stamp does. It consists of sticking to one thing until it gets there. Lord Jesus, sometimes we all over the place. We move in this, 
We move in that. We move in that glory to God. See, perseverance is failing 19 times and succeeding the 20th time. Who am I preaching to tonight? You got to stay in the race. The vision is yet for an appointed time. But in the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Glory to God. Look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What am I telling you tonight, folks? You got to choose better. Woo! What am I saying to us tonight? We got to choose better. Hallelujah. I'm persuaded. <laughs> I'm persuaded. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That postage stamp. Glory to God. The ability to stick to one thing until it gets there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm working on something. I got a goal in mind. I got a vision. And if I hold fast, if I stick to it, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're with me tonight, just type in, I choose better. I choose better. I make it personal tonight. I choose better. Father, thank you for grace on your word tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As we've taught this under the anointing tonight. Glory to God. I thank you that we're connecting in the spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I thank you for an anointing for better. We're waxing better, we're waxing stronger, we're waxing bolder, and we're going to be everything that you've called us to be. Thank you that as I taught this word, grace is coming upon your people, oh God, to press a little further, to push a little harder, to go, to go, glory to God, to where you're calling us to go. And I think that we will not be denied. Thank you for your word tonight. Thank you that we hide in our hearts that we might not sin against you, Lord. And we thank you, God, that we have the victory because we apply your word in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I hope this was a blessing to you tonight. Glory to God. <clears throat> God is doing great things, hallelujah, and he is teaching us how to get there. All right, two things we're going to do tonight, amen, before we